We've had gusts up to 115 at the visitor center. Oh, 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 so the Guadalupe Peak Trail is a very formidable one. The limestone is unforgiving. <gasps> oh, warning, if you're afraid. Oh, yes. That's scary. Welcome to the highest point in Texas. Thank you. <laughs> We're doing it just for you. We do this for everyone who yeah. walks up here. It's getting very tired. Yeah. You've heard the phrase, everything's bigger in Texas. Well, this adventure certainly fits the bill as Jess and I hike to the tallest mountain in the state, Guadalupe Peak, for one of the most epic panoramic views we've seen in all of North America. Today's mission, hike nine miles, climb over 3,000 vertical feet, and brave 50 mile an hour winds in Guadalupe Mountains National Park to touch the crown of Texas. We are currently en route to Guadalupe Peak. The last really hard hike that we did was Acatenango in Guatemala. That one was super, super hard, and when you were at the bottom of the volcano, it looked absolutely terrifying. And for what it's worth right now, I think we're still a couple miles away from the mountain, and maybe I will regret saying this later, but it doesn't look as scary. After reading the reviews, we wound up buying hiking poles for the first time, and it just feels like a very heavy transition to become <laughs> trekking pole people. But I'm ready, bring it on. So we've got two of these 48 ounce bottles. I'm hoping that's enough water. It's pretty cold today and super windy, so I don't think we're gonna be sweating a whole lot, or maybe that's really naive of me to think. <laughs> but anyway, I'm hoping this is enough to get us up and down. I think I'll be okay. We will find out. I don't know if you can tell, but it's a little windy today. We actually had a few people reach out to us on Instagram to tell us that this hike can be closed sometimes due to high winds. We don't see a sign that says that it's closed, but I'm really hoping that we don't get like a mile or two into the trail and find out that it's closed afterwards. As relatively new trekking pole users, I think Jessica and I just discovered the hard way that you need to be using gloves. My hands are so cold right now. <laughs> we've just been on the trail for a few minutes and it's kind of wild to see how much elevation we've gained already. That is the parking lot down there where we just started. Beautiful Guadalupe Mountains. Wow, Jess, this is so beautiful. I never really think of Texas as being stunning, but we spent last week in Big Bend and now this week in Guadalupe Mountains National Park, and it's just so, so beautiful. Texas is way more beautiful than I would have ever guessed. It just got incredibly windy. Whoa, oh, I lost my head. Oh no, 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 I need you. Whew. That was a close one. We crossed over the ridge from this mountain and wow. Instantly, it's like 20 degrees colder. It's also wild because we're like, I don't know, at least halfway through this hike and I still have no idea where Guadalupe Peak actually is. Do you? No. This hike is so hard to regulate temperature. It's so windy, you're constantly just taking your jacket off and on especially on a windy day. Oh, but it is so beautiful. And I am freezing right now, because I'm too lazy. Oh, oh, oh God, it's so cold. Oh my God, this is intense. This is like what, like 40 mile wind? Wow. Oh my God, it is so cold. Oh my God. Oh my god, I think I'm gonna put my jacket on now. Oh, oh. So we're about a quarter of the way up and I keep wondering if this is the peak we're hiking to cause it doesn't look that tall. And then I squinted and I saw these tiny, tiny people. Uh, that really puts it into perspective. I cannot get over how pretty these mountains in Texas are. If you had teleported me here from literally anywhere else in the country and asked me to guess where I was, I would never guess Texas. Arizona, Utah, maybe Idaho, but yeah, who knew? Texas, you're a sleeper. 
I know this is a 100% stupid opinion to have, but we were very kind of proud non-users of hiking poles before this. And because of the reviews on all trails, we decided to purchase them. And I'm gonna tell you what, I am a hiking pole evangelist now. They made it so easy. You can kind of like put a lot of your weight on them. They help with stability, just, I am loving trekking poles. Yeah, I'm a convert. I, I don't know if, uh, wow, I look like Kenny from, <laughs> from South Park, but yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. People had me pretty scared about this hike. But trekking poles, bring them, get them, love them, use them. <laughs> wow, this is so cool. Oh my God, wow. You don't want to fall off there. <laughs> There's a sign right there that says, like, careful, don't fall off cliff edges, so don't fall off cliff <laughs> What a cool hike. We're about three miles in or three quarters of the way up, and I didn't expect to see all these trees here. It's been, like, pretty much just rocky the whole time, and we haven't really seen a whole lot of trees in New Mexico or Texas so this is really pretty. I didn't expect this. Yeah, it's interesting that the tree line somehow starts 6,000 plus feet up. Do you know what elevation this trail starts at? around probably like 5,000 feet-ish of elevation. Okay. Oh, right, because it's 3,000 gain. Yeah. We've got a little over a mile to go. You ready to get it? Yeah. Okay, apparently this is supposed to be the steepest part, so let's... I got my handy trekking poles. Let's do this thing. Woo! Let's go. Okay, we've got about 0.8 miles to go, and I think I can confidently say that peak is where we're headed to, and doesn't look that bad. I think we got this, Schmidt. She said, let's go. Wow, this is so cool and so windy. <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> look at that. Oh yeah, yeah, warning, if you're afraid. Oh, 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 oh my God, oh my God, that is crazy. Wow, Jess, oh my God, that's scary. I okay. am not the biggest fan of hikes, so I'm just choosing not to look at that. The top of this hike is just getting so beautiful. Oh my God, look up that way. Wow, oh my God. It's so cool, you can see like cliffs and valleys and mountains. So we're almost at the top, but we just had to pause and show you how beautiful it is up here. Uh, just behind us is the summit, which is about 8,700 feet. And I don't know if you can see, if you follow down, look at this like river. It's about under 4,000, like close to 3,700 feet over here in this canyon which means between there and here is about a mile of elevation difference. That's uh, incredible. One wow. One of my favorite parts about this hike is you get so many different landscapes. Like over there, there was these sweeping views of these giant mountains. Now there's these like craggy hills and then this dry, cool, canyonish desert. It's just always changing. We've only hiked four miles. It's incredible how much it packs into like one little hike. Justin and I were almost at the summit when we ran into Pam, a search and rescue volunteer here in the park. I'm Pam Bales and I'm a backcountry patrol volunteer, also known as PSAR, which is Preventive Search and Rescue to inform and advise and keep people safe. So how many times have you hiked this trail? Whoa. <laughs> Besides too many. <laughs> Today it may be like 257, 258. What? You're kidding. I've been, I will patrol patrolled this summer. So you could do this blindfolded? Very much. Okay. On a moonless night. We heard that sometimes they close the trail down if it's too windy. Is that true? Not windy, hot. We've had gusts up to 115 at the visitor center, which would probably put it 120, 125. Oh and sometimes people have to make their own decisions on trail. What's something you wish more people knew about Guadalupe Mountains? The Guad, especially the Guadalupe Peak Trail, is a very formidable one. The limestone is unforgiving for joints and knees and, and muscles if you're not used to it. It's a 3,000 foot elevation gain and people underestimate the amount of hydration they need and the electrolytes to replace from either sweating or just the demand of the body. So do your research, be prepared, have plenty of water before you go on these hikes. And check into the weather because it can be 
one way down below because you're on the lee side at the trailhead and up here the winds can be 40 50 miles an hour more well pam it was so nice meeting you thank you for volunteering and uh remember stay hydrated stay on the trails <laughs> i love that advice <laughs> we'll see you at the top you bet okay if hiking this formidable trail 257 times wasn't impressive enough, at 75 years old, Pam will be here all week hiking even more difficult trails on back-to-back -back days, keeping hikers like us safe. And if that didn't make you say wow, Pam was actually played by Naomi Watts in Infinite Storm, a 2022 film chronicling Pam's true story, saving a stranger during a deadly storm on Mount Washington. We picked our jaws up off the ground and were lucky enough to hike the remainder of the trail to the summit with Pam as we showered her with questions and she fascinated us with hidden gems all around us. What's that? of a, a scallop shell. Oh, oh man. And the seafloor. Wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. I would wow. have never seen that. Wow, the backside of El Cap looks unbelievable. Honestly, I think that's like the coolest part of this hike. You can actually hike down from this point to El Cap. And in fact, Pam was telling us that in the mornings, uh, warm, moist air will come over this ridge and cool air will come over this ridge and clouds will literally be seeded. She called it like a, a cloud birthing station right in the middle of this crevice, but she said it looks pretty extraordinary. I was just standing here admiring this view and I turned around and <laughs> there's the summit. <laughs> We're like a hundred feet away. Less than that, I would say 15 feet away. <laughs> Wow, these views up here are absolutely incredible. Wow. Oh, wow. I did it. point in Texas. Do you want to touch it at the same time with me? You ready? <laughs> wow. The best times to hike Guadalupe Peak are in the spring and the fall when the temperatures are nice and mild. In the summertime, temperatures can skyrocket well over 100 degrees, so we wouldn't recommend going during this time frame. If you decide to brave it, start really early so that you can avoid the midday heat and bring lots and lots of water so that Pam doesn't have to rescue you off the mountain. The National Park Service recommends that you bring at least a gallon of water per person if you're hiking in the summertime. On the other hand, during the wintertime, temperatures can drop well below freezing and you can actually find ice and snow along the trail. Accordingly, if you go during this time frame, we definitely suggest checking all trails for recent trail reviews and bringing along micro spikes just in case. In terms of what to bring on this hike, the trail is pretty steep, rocky, and uneven, so we'd strongly recommend wearing sturdy hiking boots and bringing hiking poles. Pam wasn't lying about the trail being unforgiving in certain sections. We actually passed several people on the hike down who were struggling with severe knee pain due to the steep incline, so we think that trekking poles are really helpful here. Otherwise, this hike is pretty exposed to the sun, so in addition to water, we'd recommend bringing along sunscreen and a hat. I think I was kind of like psyching my Myself out about this hike because it has a intense elevation gain and honestly it's really not bad I think if you're in decent shape it won't be a problem for you. I always thought that the obelisk at the top of this trail was kind of interesting and it turns out the history of it actually is as well. In 1951, American Airlines donated the obelisk to the park and it was donated in memory of the postal service. I guess this area used to serve along the Pony Express and American Airlines thought it was fitting that an obelisk should be at the tallest point in Texas to commemorate such a integral part of our country. Just, um, I've never seen anything like it before and to be honest it seems kind of weird to me but uh it's kind of unique and cool dedicated to the airmen who like the stage drivers before them challenged the elements through this pass with pioneer spirit and courage which resulted in a vast system of airline transportation known as american airlines i don't know if you can see these little like rice shaped structures but they're everywhere. They're everywhere, we're sitting on them. And they're actually fossils called fusulinids. They were single-celled organisms. They're and, actually older than amoeba, which is kind of crazy. And they became fossilized at the bottom of the seafloor 260 to 300 
million years ago. And if a quarter billion year old fossils wasn't crazy enough, it's extra bizarre to think that this spot was so far underwater at one now point. Now it's at the tallest point in Texas. Bye! <laughs> Saying bye to Pam. Aww. <laughs> She's so sweet. I'm yeah, so sweet. She's waving bye off in the <laughs> distance. <laughs> So somehow we just got super lucky and we have got this place totally to ourselves. This is spectacular. Wow. I cannot believe we are up here alone. If you look between the obelisk and El Capitan, you'll see this flat rock that people like to have lunch on. But if you look closely, there's actually two ammonite fossils, which are the spiral shaped shell looking things. This is the third type of fossil that we've seen at Guadalupe Mountains National Park. And it's so cool that you can just take a closer look at things and see all these kinds of hidden gems everywhere. If you know anything about Jess and I, you know we detest graffiti in national parks, but we'll make an exception for this one. If you look very closely at this rock, you'll notice the name Birch Carson inscribed as well as the date 1928. We don't know much about him other than he was a stonemason in Van Horn and it's just pretty cool to think that there are people almost a hundred years ago hiking up here to enjoy this lovely viewpoint just like we are today. I don't know about you, but this hike was absolutely stunning. I had no idea that the mountains of Texas looked like this. If you enjoyed coming on this hike with us, please hit like in the video. And if you have any questions about this trail, please leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, this is our last stop in Texas before we head on to New Mexico and Arizona in our trek to the northernmost point that you can drive in North America, Tuktoyak Tuk in Canada. So if you want to follow along with those adventures, please be sure to subscribe. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Bye. Today's mission, to touch the crown of Texas. To touch the crown of Texas. <laughs> Stop laughing at me. You're not making it easy. To touch the crown of... To touch the crown of... To touch the... To touch the... <laughs> Stop laughing. I think that last one was good.